Well, good afternoon everybody and welcome to All Saints on this fantastic afternoon as we come and celebrate with Ellie and Jack uh, for their wedding. And a particular welcome to those who are joining us online. Sorry you can't be with us in, in person, but it's great that you're here virtually. Well, no, you're really here. Uh, and, and welcome. It's great. Um, you'll find on the service sheet, uh, just at, at the very beginning, a more formal welcome uh, to our service. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God is love. And those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. Let's pray together. God of wonder and of joy, grace comes from you, and you alone are the source of life and love. Without you, we cannot please you. Without your love, our deeds are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of life, that we may worship you now with thankful hearts and serve you always with willing minds. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our duet will sing our first hymn, Lord, the light of your love is shining.
in the presence of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we have come together to witness the marriage of Jack and Ellie, to pray for God's blessing on them, to share their joy and to celebrate their love. Marriage is a gift of God in creation, through which husband and wife may know the grace of God. It is given that as man and woman grow together in love and trust, they shall be united with one another in heart, body and mind, as Christ is united with his bride, the Church. The gift of marriage brings husband and wife together in the delight and tenderness of sexual union and joyful commitment to the end of their lives. It is given as the foundation of family life, in which children are born and nurtured, and in which each member of the family, in good times and in bad, may find strength, companionship and comfort, and grow to maturity in love. Marriage is a way of life made holy by God, and blessed by the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, with those celebrating a wedding at Cana in Galilee. Marriage is a sign of unity and loyalty, which all should uphold and honour. It enriches society and strengthens community. No one should enter into it lightly or selfishly, but reverently and responsibly in the sight of Almighty God. Ellie and Jack are now to enter this way of life. They will each give their consent to the other and make solemn vows. And in token of this, they will each give and receive a ring. We pray with them that the Holy Spirit will guide and strengthen them, that they may fulfil God's purposes for the whole of their earthly life together. First, I'm required to ask anyone present who knows a reason why these persons may not lawfully marry to declare it now. The vows that you are about to make are to be made in the presence of God who is judge of all and who knows all the secrets of our hearts. Therefore, if either of you knows a reason why you may not lawfully marry, you must declare it now. <laughs> Jack, will you take Ellie to be your wife? Will you love her, comfort her, honour and protect her, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her, as long as you both shall live? I will. Ellie, will you take Jack to be your husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honour and protect him, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him, as long as you both shall live. I will. Will you, the family and friends of Ellie and Jack, support and uphold them in their marriage now and in the years to come? We will. will. God our Father, from the beginning you have blessed creation with abundant life. Pour out your blessings upon Jack and Ellie, that they may be joined in mutual love and companionship, in holiness and commitment to each other, we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please now be seated for our reading. A reading from 1 Corinthians, chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give my body to hardship, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonour others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects always trusts and always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, 
they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away childish childhood behind me. But now we see only a reflection, as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. For now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Love is friendship caught fire. It is quiet, mutual confidence, sharing and forgiving. It is loyalty through good and bad times. It settles for less than perfection and makes allowances for human weakness. Love is content with the present, hopes for the future, and does not brood over the past. It is the day in and day out chronicles of irritations, problems, compromises, small disappointments, big victories, and working towards common goals. If you have love in your life, it can make up for a great many things that you lack. If you do not have it, no matter what else there is, it is not enough. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight now and always. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. A marriage service is a celebration of love. And at the start of the service, we heard that God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. A quotation from the first letter of John. The writer of the first letter of John is telling us that since one of the attributes of God is love, that when we love, we literally experience the divine. Now, some people have a rather limited view of God, a view that I often think of as being a Sistine Chapel view of God. God is a white-haired old man, up there, out of sight, and out of mind. But in the depiction of the creation of Adam on the ceiling of the Sistine Ch Chapel, if you're old enough, you might remember that image, uh, as it was familiar from the credits for the South Bank show, or even this reference is getting a bit old. Uh, it was also a version of it was used to advertise the film Bruce Almighty. Uh, in that image, God is stretching out his hand to touch the hand of humanity. The God of love is coming very close. And all humanity has to do is to stretch out to God. Our reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians tells us something of the qualities of love and how precious it is. But love is not just a gift that once given we have for always. Love our relationships with other people and our relationship with God all have to be worked at throughout our lives because all relationships go through their ups and downs. Love is dynamic and continually changing. If we look after the love that we have, if we tend and nurture it, then it grows. If we take the love that we have for granted, then it withers. Love is such an important part of our lives. Love is so essential for fulfilled human life. Love is such a precious gift of God and such a wonderful way in which we experience God that we all should put all of our efforts into the love that we have. Ellie and Jack, today in marrying each other, you're committing yourselves to loving each other. You've decided to marry each other, not in some romantic frenzy, but as the service says, you've decided reverently and responsibly, and in the sight of God, that this is what you want to do. Marriage itself is a process of change and of sharing. A process in which you'll need time together to grow as a couple, time apart to grow as individuals, and time to allow your experience of God to grow. All such processes of change and development have periods of great ease and joy, but also periods of difficulty and pain, for nothing worth having is ever obtained without striving after. 
and I hope and pray that neither of you will ever give up on working at making your married life together better and better. So we pray that God will be with you in your marriage and that you'll continue to work at the relationship you have with each other and with God. But Jack and Ellie, you're not just on your own in this process of growth together. You're sitting here with your family and your friends as a visible sign that you are a unique family within society. You don't cease to be part of your individual families, but in your marriage you unite your families. And your families and friends in attending this service are not just witnesses to your marriage, but they're given the responsibility to help you and support you throughout your married life. And in fact they've already promised to do that just before our readings earlier in the service. So to start this process of support, the first thing we're going to do as a congregation after you've married each other, is to pray for you and your married life together. Which of course we pray will be very long and very joyful. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So Jack and Ellie, I now invite you to join hands and make your vows in the presence of God and his people. Face each other, hold hands, look lovingly into each other's eyes, and then. I, Jack, take you, Ellie, to be my wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. According to God's holy law, in the presence of God, I make this vow. I, Ellie, take you, Jack, to be my husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part. According to God's holy law, in the presence of God, I make this vow. Fantastic, well done. Have you got a couple of things there, by any chance? <laughs> Heavenly Father, by your blessing, let these rings be to Ellie and Jack, a symbol of an unending love and faithfulness, to remind them of the vow and covenant which they have made this day, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I presume, Jack, you might want that. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's it. Hold it, but don't go any further. And then... Ellie, I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jack, I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you, and all that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the presence of God and before this congregation, Ellie and Jack have given their consent and made their marriage vows to each other. They have declared their marriage by the joining of hands and by the giving and receiving of rings. I therefore proclaim that they are husband and wife. So you to join your wife hands. That's it. Just as hard as this comfort. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Okay. Just... Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. So if you want to kneel, you're okay there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Blessed are you, O Lord our God, for you have created joy and gladness pleasure and delight, love, peace and fellowship. Pour out the abundance of your blessings upon Jack and Ellie in, in their new life together. Let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts and a crown upon their heads. Bless them in their work and in their companionship. Awake and asleep, in joy and in sorrow, in life and in death. Finally, in your mercy, Bring them to that banquet where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home. 
We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve and keep you. The Lord mercifully grant you the riches of his grace, that you may please him both in body and soul, and living together in faith and love, may receive the blessings of eternal life. Amen. Well, I'm sure that we've all really been looking forward to this day, perhaps not quite as much as these two, but I'm sure that we all want to congratulate Jack and Ellie at the earliest point on their marriage. Let's give them a round of applause.
May the hospitality of their home bring refreshment and joy to all around them. May their love overflow to neighbours in need and embrace those in distress. Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. prayer. May they discern in your word order and purpose their lives. And may the power of your Holy Spirit lead them in truth and defend them in adversity. Lord of life and love, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. May they nurture their family with devotion, see their children grow in body, mind and spirit, and come at last to the end of their lives with hearts content and in joyful anticipation of heaven. Lord of life and love, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love. Defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.